tuning in, my name is Chris, and the whole point of this video is to tell you when you're going to be using progesterones versus cerclages in patients who are at risk for preterm birth. Starting on the left side, I'm going to be working with vaginal versus IM progesterones. The first question you're asking these patients is whether they've had a history of a preterm birth. Don't care what gestational age, but if they did not have a history, when you do your transvaginal ultrasound for a cervical length as part of their antepartum you know, workup, if they have a cervical length less than two centimeters, then the treatment is going to be daily, per, daily vaginal progesterone, which will be stopped roughly around 36 weeks. You do not have to manage these patients. So, and that means, so when you're looking at the IM progesterone, they've had to have one history of preterm birth. That's what the big difference. And with this, you're immediately going to start treating them with 17P, like 250, you know, um, Q weekly at 16 week gestation, stopping at 36 weeks. But their management compared to this, which is nothing, is a little bit different. So if their preterm birth was between the weeks of 14 and 27, your first transvaginal ultrasound is gonna be at 14 weeks. If the preterm birth was between 28 and 36 though, your first transvaginal is gonna be at 16. Regardless though, after these, if the value of the cervical length is greater than three centimeters, then you're still gonna be getting every two weeks another transvaginal ultrasound while they're still getting their weekly McKenna shots. Now, if it's less than three centimeters, but greater than two and a half, then they're gonna be still getting weekly transvaginal and weekly progesterone. Now, if they had a history of preterm birth, you do the cervix, it's less than two and a half, and they're before 24 weeks of gestation, then they rule in for an ultrasound indicated cerclage. This means that at time of diagnosis, before 24 weeks, a cerclage will be placed either McDonald or Sherrod car. And this usually gets taken out in the office at 36 weeks of gestation. Um, yeah, so that's one of the three documented types. There's four total, but three documented types of cerclage placements. So that's ultrasound indicated, kind of very similar, and kind of feeds into this IM progesterone category. So you also have history indicated, right? So the three main reasons why you would do history indicated is if they have greater than one uh, second trimester loss or greater than three preterm births or prior cerclage placement. And this has to be like painless cervical dilation for secondary loss. It can't be for like other reasons for like abruption or P-prom or stuff like that or prior cerclage placement. So if they have those, then you're gonna start treating them by placing a cerclage at the McDonald's Sherrod car, um, at uh, 13 to 14 weeks. So like, you know these things already, so you don't have to wait around for them. And then you're gonna take it out just like you would for the ultrasound indicated. The, set, the third one is the exam indicated. So this is if they're coming in with symptoms. So this is like pelvic pressure, abdominal pain, more, more pelvic pressure, or like cervical mucus discharge. And then you determine that they now have Painless cervical dilation. This is my shorthand for pain. I don't know why. Um, then you're going to be doing, okay, well, maybe they're, an indi they're a candidate for this exam indicated cerclage, but you have to still rule out that they don't have abruption, they don't have infection, or no preterm labor. So checking for abruption, pretty easy. Infections, you do with your CBC, you can do some swabs. And preterm labor, you're going to do a TOCO. And if they're not contracting, that's good. Treatment, you're going to place that diagnosis, and then you're going to take it out in the office at the same time. So those are actually, you know, pretty much easy. This really doesn't determine whether or not you have like preterm birth or not. It's like kind of irrelevant. Um, but if you figure out that they have painless cervical dilation with symptoms, like that's why you would like kind of go and check them. It'd be random to like check them otherwise. The fourth one though is unindicated. As Dr. S would say. So there are three main types, history, exam, and ultrasound. And there's also a fourth one, which would be the reasons why sarcosis are placed outside of those three categories. Hope that helped and I'll be making another video probably later in regards to like the decreased risks associated with cerclages versus progesterones. Thanks!